Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Cherry Falls. Hail, hail, virgin high. Drop your pants, it's fuck or die. Directed by Jeffrey Wright, written by Ken Seldon, starring Brittany Murphy, Jay Moore, and Michael Bean, Cherry Falls is about a small town that is plagued by a psychotic murderer who is stabbing all the local virgin high school kids. This is actually a request from Zachary Haith. He's not a Patreon supporter, he's just a bloodbath supporter. He's just constantly like showing us appreciation on all social media. He basically shows up for all of my Twitch streams and I thought it'd be cool to just review something that he wants to do. So, Cherry Falls it is. It was either this or it stains the sands red, but having seen Cherry Falls, I think we, we needed to do a review of it. What do we like about this movie, guys? I'm kicking it off with Brittany Murphy. Longest time I have had a crush on her. Everyone has their top girl actress who they fantasize about. Brittany Murphy was mine. Seeing her in this film, she was amazing. She plays Jody, the main lead, and she nailed it, like she does every role, but I just loved seeing her in this film. She's my number one. Did not know that. This is my Tiffany Shepis. <laughs> <laughs> in horror movies, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, virgins usually survive, but in this movie, flips it. And I think what they were going for was kind of a satirical type thing. Kind of. We didn't go all the way with this movie, so let's call it a satire, kind of. And let's just make all of our characters go all the way. Yeah. For us. I would imagine it's hard to know who's a virgin. I can pick him out. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded creepy and weird. You're right. I mean... <laughs> Going off of Brittany Murphy, she was a strong character in this movie. It, she was a good lead. The character overall, I think, really represented what you want to see from a, a strong female. Except for the fact that she was crying in every scene. I don't know, I think that's probably good because her character was very emotional. I just thought it was hilarious and weird because she's like genuinely nearly bawling in every single scene that, of, of the whole movie. She was also surrounded by a strong supporting cast. This film had tons of characters in it. We had your typical stereotypes and they had fun with it. And I think that's what makes this film enjoyable is they took the classic slasher format and they just rolled with it to have fun with the idea that a killer is preying on teens. And all three victims appeared to be Virgins. The town finds out that they're murdering virgins, so the kids decide to just go wild and do the exact opposite that would get them killed. Sex party. You know where it is? Which I think was also one of the funniest parts of the film was when they were having this pop your cherry party. When they eventually got to the house, they just like <laughs> go into a room and it's exactly what you would imagine. Just like hundreds of people just like doing it next to each other. It, it was downright hilarious. If I was in high school, I would totally be attending this. And as like me right now, well, I'd want to attend only to, so I could open a door and find DJ Qualls, the new guy, just hanging there, banging some chick. I think that would be hilarious to see. They were very like chivalrous in their way. Sharon, you look uh, voluptuous. They didn't just go and do it. They, like, had a slow dance, you know, they courted <laughs> each other. Like, they don't know what they're doing, but at least they're doing it, like, not savage-like. The only thing I wish happened was there was, like, I Swear by All For One playing while they're all slow dancing before they go upstairs to have their sex. The one guy who didn't get sex was the one who just, like, went right for the boob. It's a typical 16-year-old move, though. These guys were, like, 17, 18. Well, no, I think it was anybody in the high school, right? Can you imagine being that, like, grade 9, that 14-year-old who, like, sees, like, the senior? the senior cheerleader? She's like, I need to, like, do it with someone because I don't want to die. I'll do it! Yep. If I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Belt comes off, you see, like, the dice bag slides <laughs> off that he keeps attached. He's like, I gotta roll my crit. <laughs> Someone wasn't invited to theirs. I told you, I, I, can, I can point him out. I was the bard. I had that that pl plus five like flute. To, yeah, like, your to fucking face. plus five to your charisma is really gonna get you laid, John. <laughs> Jumping out of the fuck fest for a second, <laughs> the killer was pretty enjoyable. I enjoyed like the look and the mystique of the killer. I mean, there is a twist. It's definitely a whodunit. Watching this movie now, and I'm certain even first time viewers are going to know that this is clearly a crossdresser because of the hands, mainly. It's, a, it's clearly a wig. There's like a lot of things that 
They're trying to throw the audience off, and you don't really know who it is until the very end of the film, so we're not going to spoil that. But the fact that it's clearly a cross-dressing killer, I thought it was great. Yeah, they did do a lot of red herrings in this film. They were just, like, toying with the audience, being like, oh, this person had a shoe on in the cafeteria. This person smokes. This person wears red nail polish. It can fool some people, but n not most. <laughs> not most, not no. Not us. Virgin spot and eagle eyes. <laughs> we gotcha, we gotcha. There's just so much ridiculous. Like, speaking of the pile, when the killer gets in there and starts slashing away... <laughs> like, That's amazing. Yeah, it's just like the opinion, the reaction, it's just so all-out ridiculous. I'm glad that they just decided to go all in on it. <laughs> back to the pile. Back to the pile. <laughs> everyone back in the pile. Back in the pile, everyone. We're going back to the pile. Jump in. Come on, everybody. We're going back to the pile. Yeah, come on. Dig it, dig. What didn't we like about this movie? Some of the editing choices when it came to the kill scenes, I think, are going to be the biggest issues because while the kills did look nice to an extent, they are ruined by this fake, weird slow motion shot that they try to do, but it's not slow motion. It just looked terrible. It was just horrible. They also tended to cut away from the gore, so you don't see a lot of the gore, um, or the like close-up kills and that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for an all-out gore fest, this isn't the movie for you. To add to that, as we said earlier, it's kind of predictable. The Their twist and their red herrings are kind of obvious and, and not overly well done. Even though this film was filled with stereotypical characters, there were certain characters I did find pointless and didn't do a lot to the story. In particular, the mother. I didn't necessarily feel that she needed to be in there other than for like a one-off red herring effect because she smoked. They just used her to create turns in the plot and I felt that it didn't need to be. Including like sexual tension between her daughter's boyfriend. Like it's completely unnecessary. Only like one isolated scene. And actually the sexual tension in general throughout this movie, I don't know if it was intentional. It must have been. When it came to the dad like teaching his daughter, like he's the sheriff and he's teaching his daughter some like judo throw and then he ends up like landing on top of her and it holds the shot and it's a weird situation because it looks like they're gonna kiss each other. And every time that Brittany Murphy went up to pretty much anyone, it looked like she was going to kiss them. Yeah, they had a really strange vibe, especially with Brittany Murphy and Jay Moore, who plays the teacher in this film. Anytime the two of them were together, it just built this awkward tension, and it kind of made you feel uncomfortable. I didn't necessarily feel uncomfortable. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, especially when she's constantly trying to like bite people's fingers like even Timmy she's just standing there and he's like she's trying to bite his finger for no reason also who goes to school at like midnight and what teacher stays in school until midnight and like has Wait, like you don't no, I'm... You need to be a better quality teacher, John. No, be there they, for your students when they're, when they're, when they're looking for in, you. When they're looking in the building, like, oh, I wonder if uh, the teacher's in. It's like 9 o'clock at night. She had a problem. She needed to address it, and you were there for her. Yeah, but everyone else just shows up to his house. If we can just save one kid, isn't it worth it, John? Save that kid. Save that kid. Ta Save hey, that hey, kid. It's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I had to be unbiased with this film because Brittany Murphy starred in it and I love her so I would just give it like 10 out of 5 just for her being in it but that's not the case today because there are some things in this film I didn't necessarily like. The overall story and the red herrings was kind of cheap and not as rewarding as what it could have been but overall this really was a fun film. I enjoyed all our characters, I enjoyed our killer and I enjoyed this whole setup. It was one of those ones I felt went under the radar. And I definitely think people should check it out. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film four crispy cookies out of five. I didn't overly enjoy this movie. I wanna take you back to when I was in high school with my buddies. We're gonna go watch this movie and it sounds like a fun sex romp with some kills. And you know, you didn't get that much sex and you didn't get that much kills. And so I walked away with a movie that maybe would be funny, but I didn't find it overly funny. So I just kind of left disappointed. Rewatching it now, I have slighter appreciation for it, but not that much. Things were kind of predictable. I don't think it delivered on the kills. I don't think it delivered on the teen sex romps that you would expect maybe even from like an 80s slasher 
mainstream movie or something like that. Instead, what you have is a movie that's almost there. I don't think it qualifies it's so bad it's good either. So it's just kind of in limbo for me. So with all that being said, I'm going to give it two moments of class management out of five. This was a decent whodunit. Well, it definitely has its faults. Uh, I do enjoy the killer. As ridiculous as like the situations and some of the red herrings can be, I still think it was fun. And the, the whole idea of the fuck fest itself is great. Big orgy guy. Huge. I love orgies. Big into them. Had one the other day, just so you know. <laughs> Had three this morning before they showed up. The characters were all fairly likable, and I liked the discovery aspect of trying to figure out what's really going on. But at the same time, it is kind of predictable. I wish we had some better kills, and I think if they like tightened up some of the editing when it came to the slow motion that they tried to do, it would have been better. But at the end of the day, I still really enjoyed it, and I think a lot of people will have a good time with it. So I'm going to give this three... Shark attacks out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, there is a newer Screen Factory release of it. Uh, links are in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and beyond.